Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 13 of the front dash build. In this video we'll look at the armament panel and we'll look to produce that using real aircraft switches. We can then implement that into the front dash frame and bring it online. We'll also look at the TISL and circuit breaker panels and the production of those and they will be implemented at this point into the front dash as placeholders to be wired up later. Let's buckle up. To this point I've not used much in the way of real aircraft parts for the Simpit, but the armament panel is one that I've always had in mind some real toggles to use. So I looked online and, and from eBay got just a couple of Tornado panels, uh, XMOD, and then just took a little bit of time to take them apart to salvage the toggles from them. Of the ones that I did get, this engine control panel is definitely in the best condition. Most of them generally were damaged. So I'll just take a bit of time here to do a clean and tidy disassembly and then I can from that take the key components. This one has a very easy to remove light plate because it has a detachable connector. I did find that not to be the case with some panels. And with these real aircraft panels, they really do ooze quality. So the components that are removed at the back, the toggles, as you could see there by that brand in there, manufactured or were manufactured by Lucas Aerospace that was Coventry based in England. The removal of the metal spacers at the back of the panel allows both ends to be pulled apart to reveal the wiring and components. Let's just take a closer look at that. Proper military spec, nice. As I remove the toggles, I label all of them. So at any point in the future, if I look back, it's clear which part of this panel they originated from. The force needed for actuation on some of them is quite notable. And the design of my front dash should mean that it will uh, withstand that without any problems. And again, definitely a really nice filter, the movement and actuation of these. Proper high quality. Of the other couple of panels that I did get, what we can see now is more typical of the condition they're usually in. Some may have missing parts uh, and others like this have just got parts that have broken off and other parts that are slightly damaged. I think it's really great just to know in using these in my sim pit that they're actually from a real aircraft and were actually in use. And at this point they're XMOD, they are classed as unflightworthy and I don't doubt they would have probably sat in someone's garage in a box, never been used um, and and just sitting there wasted. Whereas to, to be able to implement them into the sim pitch is almost to breathe some extra life into them and to make use of these fantastic components. So across a number of panels, with the exception of the first one we looked at, the others were not necessarily of the best quality. There was some damage to some of them. We've been able to salvage a number of high quality toggles that we can now use. 
So we can see now the faceplate within which all of the toggles will be mounted into. And we can now start the process of installing the toggles into the faceplate. We can now see in place some of the toggles that have a larger footprint to the rear of them. And this did have to be taken into account in the design of the faceplate and the layout of the text to ensure that the transmission of light could reach as much of that text as possible. So at this point all of the toggles are now installed. And the look that we have to this panel now is exactly what I wanted for the armament panel. And as we can see, there's a good bit of existing wiring that we can work with. Rather than the normal approach to bat lighting, which is to suspend a sheet of acrylic with LEDs on, I took a different approach of 3D printing this piece of plastic which can snake in and out of all of these very large rears of the toggles to get that bat lighting in as close as we can. This approach does improve the bat lighting to the text. And initial tests look about in keeping with the backlighting of other panels. I now test the connections all over again just to be absolutely certain it's all working as it should. And something that I consider is that there was already wiring at the rear of these toggles and that wiring itself did not connect into very easily or nicely an RJ45 socket like a keystone jack and a special punch down tool is required to insert and remove this wiring at the rear. So the approach I've taken is to leave all of the existing wiring in place and then build my own adapter which is attached to the rear of this which allows it to convert those toggles and the existing wiring into the standard RJ45 interface that I use. I use this to interface to the keyboard encoder, which in turn talks to the computer. This means that I can use this panel with any simulator just by within that sim altering the keyboard bindings. We're ready now to install this into the front dash frame. So we'll take a close up look now at that as installed and then we'll just run a couple of tests as it's brought online just to see how it's talking to the sim. So from this position we're able to catch the main monitor in the background. Let's just see if we can get the armament panel in view. Let's redo that, but we'll bring the armament panel within the sim into clearer focus. So everything's working as it should, the panel's talking nicely to the sim. 
the actuation force of a couple of these toggles is greater than what a standard toggle would be. The good thing is I can't see any movement of the front dash frame whilst flicking these toggles which would suggest that the, the way in which it's built particularly with those metal supporting threaded rods is definitely giving it the strength it needs. Now we'll just take a step back now and come round to the side we can catch just a, a side profile of that as installed into the frame and then we'll just come a little bit further around the side of the front dash just so we can see the rear of the panel and the wiring. The supported threaded rods have also come in handy to suspend the cables from to give some strain relief. So that's the armament panel built, tested and implemented. So we said we'd look at the Tissel and Circuit Breaker panels and they're to be built and installed as placeholders at this point. We'll first look at the Tissel. I found some square momentary push buttons online which are fairly inexpensive and they've got a really good feel to them so decided I'd use these for this panel. I made some simple printed labels to be cut out and placed into the windows of these push buttons. So I disassemble the buttons and reassemble them with the labels in place. The Tissel panel is not functional within the A10C SIM, so at this stage I've built it as a placeholder. It's got all of the components in place to interface it into the SIM, and at some point in the future I'll revisit it to do that. So now comes a point where we take the Tissel panel and we can integrate that into the front dash frame. And there we go. So what that brings us on to now is the final part which is the placeholder for the circuit breaker panel. And it's incorporation into the front dash. The circuit breaker panel as it will be ultimately will enable the status of uh, one of the breakers itself to be toggled and also for an illumination of that switch of that toggle to indicate that it's been flipped. I've designed and made these PCBs and also designed and 3D printed some breakers that will sit on top of them. At this point we can see the main faceplate, the circuit breakers with their rated values and all of the PCBs that they will be mounted onto. Ultimately, I do want the circuit breaker panel to be fully interface into the SIM and it is something that's functional within the A10C module. I've made it to this point that all of the tactile switches, all of the toggles are individually addressable as are each of the backlit LEDs within them. Ultimately, my thinking is that each of these will be interfaced via a matrix to the SIM, a matrix to control the LEDs and a matrix to control the tactiles. This will take a good bit of time to do and with so many other things to build at the moment it doesn't seem like the best use of time given the extent that the circuit breaker panel is used in typical flight. But I've built it from a circuitry point of view as we can see now so it is ready when the time comes to do the final interface into the sim. And to keep all of the options open for the interface as can be seen here I've kept the LEDs and tactiles all individually addressable. Let's now put this in place. So in installing the armament, tissel and circuit breaker panels this is a good first step in populating the front dash frame with all of the instruments. I'll now turn my attention to the design, build and implementation of some of the other instruments and hope to share those soon. Thanks for watching.